Officials said up to 7,500 gallons of the chemical, which is used to clean coal, supposedly leaked from a Freedom Industries chemical plant. Modern dads are helping with groceries, preparing meals, and are spending more time than ever with their children. It's going to be a 90-minute tour through the Polar Express, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'll take you there. The Royals crossed the pond to visit the U.S. this week. Some experts said that instead of the ban, there should be more preventative measures. Her portable heater exploded, drenching her in oil. Crews worked all night long to get these trains upright again after the train and logging accident. A lot of you are worried we're going to see a lot worse conditions than this. And Stephen Smith has been expelled from the school indefinitely. For those of you that love coffee, Monday was a great day. Mining officials, friends and family of the fallen miners, even survivors of the disaster were there today to honor the 78 fallen men that lost their lives in the Farmington mine disaster. It's an honor to come knowing that my father sacrificed his life. Sharon said she was just five years old when she lost her father. It was very hard knowing that I wasn't going to have a dad there for my high school graduation. I was going to have a dad there for my wedding. One local man said he remembers it clear as day what it was like the morning of the explosion. I felt I felt the explosion because it uh, it shook the ground and I lived about three miles from the explosion and it shook the ground like a bomb and uh, that morning when I was going to work I seen Walter Cronkite standing there on the bridge and I knew something big had happened. During the service, wreaths were placed around the monument. Each man's name was read aloud, and then there was a moment of silence. The memorial service for the Farmington Mine disaster falls on the Sunday closest to the tragic day. United Mine Workers of America President Cecil Roberts said support continues to grow for this event for the 78 fallen miners. It is a therapeutic day. I think it's a, I think it's a day of remembrance. It's a day, I think, to reinvigorate yourself to go forward and, and remember why we have health and safety laws, what just happened here in West Virginia with uh, CEO being indicted that says hey, no one's above the law here and the, the law that these people died for has to be honored and has to be respected. This tragedy is what led to federal regulations that protect minors to this day. We, you know, it's easy to say we'll never forget, but when a coal miner tells you they're not going to forget something, you can see we don't. While the Farmington number no. 9 explosion happened 46 years ago, just recently a new lawsuit was filed. Two families claim information about the incident was hidden from them and they're seeking a little over $100,000 for all 78 states of the miners. The Sheriff's Department has its hands full trying to keep people from the Moats Fall area in Arden. It's extremely dangerous. Throughout the years, it's been the site for numerous drownings and that's why they've stepped up their patrols. The water was raging today at Moats Falls in Arden. The Barber County Sheriff's Department has already started issuing warnings and next could be tickets. We're going to be uh, patrolling real aggressive down here this year uh, down at Moats Falls. You know, we, we don't have time for the fatalities. It ties up too many resources. Um, if you are out here on the rock, you're considered to be trespassing. Drownings here are not uncommon. Oftentimes a person will drown when trying to swim through one of the underwater tunnels. You got the water that's just raging around these rocks. You got sinkholes. You know, when it rains in Elkins, the, the river level goes up so fast and you don't really know that it's coming. Um, and then, like I said, when you factor in that and young kids down here with alcohol and you know, and other substances, it's just not a good combination. Not only can the rapids be deadly, there's also debris, sometimes even drug paraphernalia laying around. We catch them out here, you know, smoking marijuana, and then when they leave, you know, they're driving out of here intoxicated. It's not safe for the local people down here at all. The Barber County Sheriff's Department said they're going to be patrolling this area hard this summer, and they want to make sure people know to stay away. Last year we, we patrolled aggressive and, and we kept people out. Uh, we had no fatalities last year. That's the first time in, in a, a very long time. And hopefully this year we can do the same thing, save some lives. 
If you're looking for some sunshine and warm water, a good place to visit instead is a state park like Audra. And you don't have to go far because it's also in Barber County. The Wreaths Across America ceremony is about to start at the West Virginia National Cemetery in Grafton. There are hundreds of people here for this event. Through the efforts of everyday people, over 1,000 wreaths were donated. One young girl even raised a little over $1,000 for the wreaths. It started out as her social studies project, but turned into so much more. I gave out a survey and on the last question, it was like, will you be willing to donate $15 for a wreath? I feel very proud. This day is especially important to widow Judy Turner. Her husband is buried in section five of the cemetery. My husband was the sweetest man on the planet. He he had the most infectious smile. Awesome man. A little over 1,000 of these wreaths are going to be placed around the cemetery to honor these veterans that have given so much to our country. Different groups like the West Virginia Patriot Guard were there to help place the mementos across the grounds. It's hard to explain. It, it's so nice. And the families that we meet here and we get to participate with, it's, it's overwhelming to be able to do this with them. Turner said her husband's memory lives on through this program. He would do anything to help anyone, and that can't die with him. It, it can't, it, I mean, he would be here. And as we stand here today, he is. Reporting in Taylor County for 5 News, I'm Phyllis Smith.